What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Recently we made one talking about how you can save money in game. You guys really enjoyed it. So this time I put a community questions post out for the community to answer on with comments, obviously, and talk about <laughs> ways that they also go around and save money in the game to help them keep their cash stacks high and whatnot. So in this video, hopefully we'll learn something interesting about that, things that people do to save money, and I'll give you an example on screen while I go around and do it as well. Um, but credit to everybody who did leave comments, I appreciate it. And uh, Thank you so much. But otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're going to start off by quickly using these treasure hunter keys because why the hell not? We get a lamp and surprisingly we get a, a protein bar. And um, let's move on to the video. Okay, so our first comment does say, buying items in bulk, food, potions, pages, etc. Especially after double XP. Buy more than you think you'll use for months. If you keep your bank full of miscellaneous useful items, your cash can just be used on bonds and gear after. Edit. It also helps you not to buy random items at plus 20% G price because you get impatient. This is actually a really good tip. And this is why I put it in the first bit because I think this is a great idea. And for those of you that don't know, we do have double XP pretty often. So every few months, you're going to have a double XP. And when double XP is coming towards the end or uh, it has finished, you'll notice that supplies like vulnerability bombs or uh, overloads or cooked food or literally anything that's, that's like ready for pvm so all your potions or your brews or your food all that sort of good stuff has actually dropped in price the reason it drops in price is because everybody crafts them to get through the xp so people cook the raw the raw fish and sell the food immediately and the reason people sell it immediately is because they want to get that money back so they can then move on to the next skill so say you wanted to get 99 cooking you would cook all the raw fish you would sell the raw fish and then you would use that extra money you got back onto another skill say herbal for example then you make all those potions and you sell those potions for as much, little as you can to get rid of them to make Make sure you get your money back to move on to the next skill, which may be fletching. So then you get some arrows out of it. You can see how this works. So everybody sells all their stuff, they dump it off, and you can take advantage of that. So if you do have a decent cash stack when double XP comes around, buy up these supplies at the end of the double XP or towards the end, and then go ahead and make sure you've got enough for the next few months. So if you can stock up, you'll be PVMing basically on lower cost supplies for a few months. And then when double XP comes back around again, guess what? you're probably going to have a little bit of low supplies stock up again get ready to go again and you will save money in the long run i think this is a genius idea and i, I really just I, this is clever i mean i don't do this as much as i would like to say i do i do it sometimes if i have the money around there but if you can get in the rotation of doing this you'll probably be okay every time it comes around to get into keep doing it over and over again and uh, as for buying random items at plus 20 percent g price i am absolutely guilty of this so uh, you know it's, it's definitely not a bad idea the next comment says, I mean, what I do to save money is fish my own food while I'm at work, then sell the raw and buy the equal amount in cooked, and then spend the rest towards PVM or skilling stuff, depending on how I'm feeling. Currently being on a mining binge to go for 99 smithing, which by the way, room to use your spirits and notepaper, it's definitely worth it if you're going to train mining for a long period of time. So this is actually kind of clever and I didn't even, I wouldn't have even thought about this. And personally, I wouldn't do this myself, but to be honest, if you have a job where you can literally just have like RuneScape Mobile open and you can just fish your own raw food raw food generally does sell for more than the cooked food because you get xp out of cooking it right so it's just the way it is people spend more for the raw food than they cook it and then they sell the cooked version as a little bit less a bit of a loss so this actually is pretty cool so he's gonna fish all this stuff all day make a profit on his food because he'll sell the raw off buy the same and cooked and then he'll still have a little bit of money left over and then he can go ahead and spend that on other supplies this is actually really clever and i do like this idea but again it will be depending whether you have the effort to do this whether you want to um whether you have like the, the time to do this at work and stuff as well but hey this is a great way to save money and i think a lot of people will be able to do this so i mean it's it's not a bad idea i guess you could also argue that you know you could also just afk a boss but if you are working somewhere maybe you don't have uh, the sort of thing that you could you could risk just afking a boss and then timing out and missing a drop or maybe you really can't pay attention to your phone enough to be able to keep an eye out for any drops and your legendary pet doesn't always pick drops up like it doesn't always do it sometimes it, it does miss them and you have to get them yourself um maybe you don't have the ability to be able to re-overload make sure you stay logged in sometimes if you have to deal with like customers and stuff maybe uh, so this is definitely a, a pretty cool idea for those people who can't do that so if you are someone who was always thinking oh, i wish i could afk and dictory work but sometimes randomly the phone might ring and i need to answer it and then i can't pay attention to my phone or something hey come and do this get your own fish get your own um skilling supplies and stuff like that sell them off and then buy more supplies this is genius this next comment says use insight fear because once you hit five stacks then the rune cost is going to be zero so as you use Inside Fear, for example, if I change to Inside Fear and start attacking this dummy, you'll see my stacks do go up to five. So 
Once it reaches five, you're actually not going to use any more runes while using abilities here. So you see my rune count is not going down every time I use abilities. Uh, every now and again, it will drop a little bit because of auto attacks. But other than that, it is not going to go down whatsoever. So as long as you just use abilities, you have zero rune costs on Inside Fear. And you're still getting the tier 99 damage and the AoE that you get from it. That being said, uh, you can also use your Tsunami ability and it's not going to reset your things and you still don't have to use any runes. So it's, it's actually pretty good. You get the AoE and you can use a Tsunami and get the buff from that. They also mentioned that you can also use a Grasping Rune Pouch, which of course you should definitely get because this is also going to save you runes when you do actually get stacks, when you do cast abilities, um, all that sort of stuff. When you actually do use runes, you can save some runes from that. These are all great things, but it's also worth noting as well though that Insight Fear is incredibly expensive to use. So once you use the Staff of Armadil, you can actually then use a ton of runes as you will see it all drop down here every time i crit because you're going to use an ability every time even if you are on max stacks you're still going to do that because your staff's firing auto attacks you don't want to four tick with insight fear there's absolutely no point it doesn't just stacks or anything you want to four tick with something like blood barrage or ex you can use exanuate i guess but blood barrage makes sense seeing as you get healing from it and you don't get it from this that being said another thing you can do is once you've staff specced if you aren't lazy like i am you can then switch to Exanuate as your main spell after using Tsunami. So you, what, would, what you would normally do is if I go and quickly reset my abilities actually. Um, what you're going to want to do is make sure you, once you've used your Tsunami, you can change to Exanuate when you use your staff spec. And that way the uh, actual abilities that it uses is going to be Exanuate instead. But at the same time, the reason you will swap to this and not just Blood Barrage is because you get stacks out of this when you norm use normal abilities, increasing your damage further. So basically what I'm talking about is Insight Fear all the way to five stacks. Use your Tsunami once you get there. And then you can Staff Spec. And then when you've done that, change to Exanuate. And that way you'll still lose the runes, but you're not using soul runes. But then when you do use abilities, you'll notice that you are getting your Exanuate stacks, which increases your damage and does give you Rack of Ruin. You'll just need to remember that if you are doing this to when you are due to come back to using Tsunami, you want to swap back to Insight Fear. Or you can do it just for the buff runs out and uh, you'll keep that and you won't lose the stacks from it. So you can keep that. It is effort, but it is going to save you money in the long run and also increase your DPS a little bit, giving you the Rack and Ruin and Exanuate buff. This next comment is to use Lanternime Instant Sticks as it does save potions by extending them, meaning you can probably get two kills at, say, like Nex or at Raksha on one overload rather than just one dose. So you basically get two kills out of one dose. Um, so this is obviously going to save you potions in the long run. That being said, technically, it does lose you money when you use these. Unless you actually are using specific combinations and using more than like two or three potions, you're not really going to save any money using instant sticks. They're so expensive that it does end up losing you money. But one thing that it does do and why I'm including this is it does save you a lot of time. So for example, if I load my banking preset, because I do use these, the Lanterdown ones here increase the duration of your potions and like weapon poison and all that sort of stuff. So for example, if I use these normally, you're going to see that I get a six minute timer um, on all of them uh, and 12 minutes on, on weapon poison. But if I increase this, by using Lance Diamond Sense Sticks. And then I boost it and like overload it, all that sort of good stuff. And then use my potions again. You see I get an eight minute timer on the on these. And if I get a weapon poison out of here, I get a 14 minute timer out of my weapon poison. So that's still pretty good, right? And you think, oh, that's, that's good. That's going to save time and money. It does save time and it does mean you have to make less potions as long as you use it properly. And as long as you are making sure that you actually get the most out of these uh, overload doses and whatnot. So time equals money, in my opinion. So if you don't have to make as many overloads, you don't have to go out of your way to do that. Technically, you're going to be saving money as well. But I am going to include this one as a time saver uh, because I do think that these are great, in my opinion, because the less time you're stood there crafting overloads and all that sort of stuff, um, the better. Absolutely the better. But technically, using Lantern Diamond Scent Sticks is a GP loss. Even, even if you've already overloaded and you're just upkeeping it for an hour, it is still a GP loss. But overall... It is still good to be using these because, hey, if you can't bother making those overloads, it's great. And if you can save yourself for an hour eventually, then that hour could have been spent making God knows how much money doing PVM. That's just the way I look at it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments about this one. But I still think this was a decent one to share. So thank you. Thank you. All right. So the last comment that we're going to use says to do uh, rune shops, basically to run and get your own runes from the shops. This is actually not a bad shout and it doesn't take that long to do. And it will save you money over the long run because, you know, rune shops do save a lot of money and it does make a lot of money. So you can use this as a money making thing, as a daily thing. Um, and you can also use it as just a way to save on rune costs as well. But um, either way, you, you could probably do this, especially if you're logging in and you're thinking what to do. You're still at the, the grand exchange or you're still at the bank, not really doing anything. You could go ahead and you can just buy the runes from the rune shops, just like I am here. 
And I know it's not much, like it's really not that much, but you could definitely buy them from here and save yourself a bit of money. I believe all the elemental ones are worth getting. Um, and the, the soul and bloods. There might be some others that are worth getting, like the natures possibly. You would have to check on the grand exchange prices and whatnot. But it literally doesn't take long. Just to teleport around to the few rune shop places, grab them, and uh, make a bit of profit off of it that way. Or, obviously, save yourself a bit. 100 runes really isn't going to go far. It's not. But by the time you do this, it is around about just under 1 mil profit each time. So like I say, if this is something that you're doing because you're stood around doing nothing, then hey, while you're thinking of what to do, while you're waiting for a friend to come along and PVM with you, you could definitely do this and um, end up saving yourself a bit of money in the long run. Uh, it's definitely something you can do. And I like this idea. But I think this comes down to stuff whether you can actually be bothered to go ahead and do this sort of thing while you're waiting. I know a lot of people would just stand at walls and wait for their friend that said, oh, I'll be 10 minutes. You could do this in 10 minutes. It, it, way less than 10 minutes. Literally just a few uh, minutes as you do it. And you've made some of that profit. So this stuff would add up in the long run. And you may think while watching this right now, I'm going to be super efficient and do this from now on. Whenever someone says, oh, just wait five minutes, I'm going to do this. And I would, I'm thinking this as I'm recording it. Hey, I could do this. But I probably won't. <laughs> so it is one of those. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do this. The, the places you want to hit up the most, um, and grab the free ones as well, of course, is um, going to be the Lunar Isles, the the Mage's Guild and Yanil, and the Trader in Alcarid if you've done the quest requirement for it. The reason you want to hit those up first, I probably should have showed you those first, to be fair, um, is because you're going to get out of those the Soul Runes and the Blood Runes, and those are the big savers, the big profit makers as well. Um, the Soul Runes are huge profit. And make sure you've got the Water Runes too, of course, if you're not going to get all the other ones, because that is massive profit too. But you want to come upstairs, you want to trade the, is it the Magic Store owner, I think? Yep, grab your Soul Runes, grab your Blood Runes, and then grab all of you. These have a thousand of each here, so you're actually getting quite a bit when the other time you've done this. And again, this is this is two minutes and 30 seconds seconds so far and we've nearly got um, like, like this is quite a good amount i'm going to get through the end we're going to grab the last bit from alcarid here there is a few more places you could stop uh, like birth up and whatnot but we're going to grab the main ones here and then i'm going to price check it and show you how much you do actually get from doing this and then we'll, we'll see what we get so you're going to trade this guy you want to go look at your uh, selection of runes and you want to go um to other runes and then buy the soul runes and stuff from here as well. So soul runes, blood runes. I think natures are worth getting. But again, I'm not going to buy them just in case they're not. Um, and then we're going to trade him and just go to your uh, regular stuff. Buy elemental runes. Buy all of these as well. Another 300 from each. And then we're going to do a price check. So let's grab this. Chuck them in here. 1.7 mil and it's three minutes it took me three minutes that's pretty great man that's so good this this one was great little recommendation so thank you for that and like i say if you're waiting for your friend you've done this you come back they're like right guys i just grabbed my uh my cup of coffee just grabbed my sandwich or whatever just ate finished what i was eating let's go do some bossing um, of course it's not gonna be exactly 1.7 mil don't get me wrong you had to spend the money on that but either way it's great and it definitely will save you money in the long run and it will add up very very much but anyway, guys, that is going to bring us to the end of this video. Hopefully, you found some useful stuff in here for ways that you can save yourself a bit of extra money here and there. The example I gave at the beginning of this was to make your own Vizwax. So that's another thing you can do as well. If you guys have more ways um, that, that are actually uh, pretty pretty decent, then drop them in the comments down below. Maybe I'll make a part two to this. Um, and if, if there is plenty, then I'll go ahead and do that. And of course, I'll use your comments as the um, as the credit for doing so. It's always a good good thing to make sure you guys get the recognition that you, that you give to help me make videos. A lot of you guys help a lot and that's very much appreciated so if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new around here and guys i will catch you all in the next one see you later guys bye